What do this tube and this paper clip have to do with a rhombic antenna? If you're interested in finding out, stick around. W1VLF. Hey everybody, this is Paul W1VLF and welcome back to the lab. So in answer to that question, uh, what this tube has to do with the rhombic antenna, and that's nothing at all. <laughs> um, this is a 7, what is it? It's an IMAX 750TL. It's a 750 watt air-cooled tube. Um, God, I don't know what year this, this tube was made, but it's, it's very, very old. And it was used in an induction heater for uh, hardening bearings at the, the Torrington Company, which is a local company uh, to me, many, many years ago. All right, stop, stop texting me. So I just thought you'd like to see that. And also it's uh, baby brother, which is the, uh, what's this one? This is the 400 TL. Just a triode, right? Big plate inside, tri uh, grid over here and directly heated filaments. So anyhow, let me just set these aside. Okay, so how many of you guys and ladies have been in these meetings at work where you are just absolutely bored because 1% of a two hour meeting is pertinent to you and the rest of it is just not, does not have any value. Well, I'm in one of these meetings one day and we had a big packet of papers handed out and, and they had these paper clips on them. And I'm looking at the paper clip and I'm fiddling with it and I'm fiddling with it and I'm drawing antenna diagrams and stuff like that on my paper, on my notebook to look like I'm really doing something. And then I'm looking at this paper clip and it looks like two lobes of an antenna, right? And I'm squeezing it and I'm squeezing it, and suddenly those two, I don't know if you can see that, those two line, those two lobes line up. And I said, holy crap, that's what's happening in a rhombic antenna. You have a long wire antenna with lobes that of patterns that get formed, and by changing the angle between the two wires, you get the lobes to line up and you have gain. And so that's what we're gonna talk about here. Uh, not so much right here, uh, but when we get over to the desk. So everybody's, a lot, a, lot of guys, a lot of people are like, boy, but I love to have a rhombic, right? You read stories, these things are huge, they cover acres. So if we think about a rhombic for a while, let, let's, let's just talk about, uh, Four wavelengths. Physi they have to be physically big, right? So if you think about four wavelengths on 80 meters, let's call that 250 feet or 80 meters uh, for, uh, for a rhombic. So each leg on the rhombic has to be roughly, for a four wavelength rhombic, uh, 1,000 feet long. So you have 1,000 feet going out this way, a thousand feet going out this way, another thousand this way, another thousand this way. Well, I don't know about you, but that's not something that I'm going to be able to do. Uh, maybe out, out in the Midwest where you have lots of farmland and things or big short wave stations. But, geez, you read so much about these things, you, you say, geez, if there was some way I could experiment with it. So you think about 10 meters, right? So 30 feet. That's still 120 feet on a side which makes the overall length of the antenna roughly 250 feet, let's say, right? That's still kind of big. And, on to, and to top it all off, you need to have four supports, specifically in a location that aims this rhombic, because you can't move something 250 feet long, that, that plants that signal right where you want it to be. So that, that was a little bit depressing. But anyway, let, if we start thinking about three meters, the FM broadcast band, or two meters, 155 megahertz, all of a sudden, let's say on two meters, six, uh, six, six feet, 
per times four wavelengths, that's 24 feet by 24 feet. That's doable, you know? But you still have to have four, um, it, excuse me, you still have to have four supports. And it still has to be pointed in one specific direction. So is that, that's kind of out of the, out of the realm of possibility, right? Because where am I going to get four supports? Then I thought of a way how to do it with only two supports. And it actually worked out really, really well. A couple of things came together here. One is the two supports that I had happened to be in a direct line towards New York City, Philadelphia, and Delaware, and all of where I wanted to pick up uh, FM broadcast stations. I'm like, wow, how, how is this, you know, this is just so lucky. And I'll show you this on a map. Um, now the other problem is, how the heck do I get the rhombic to stay up with only two supports. And if you give me a minute, I'll set something up here on the table. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. And I'll show you how I did it. And it worked fantastic. Um, signal strengths from all the broadcast stations down in Philadelphia were beautiful. Now, <clears throat> I have to preface all this by saying I did this back in 2004 when there's not a huge amount of uh, cameras and smart camera you know you couldn't just click anything you wanted whenever you wanted but I do have some photos so I'll show you how I actually built it but I have a little uh, demonstration piece here on the side let me uh, let me uh, set that up and see if I can get a good camera angle on it and I'll show you what I'm talking about okay folks we're back and I got a little setup here to show you so let's assume for a minute that this is my tower in the backyard and this is going to be the rhombic antenna, obviously. And this is the other pole that I had in the yard. I had a 30-foot pole for testing antennas. And lo and behold, boy, was I ever lucky. It ended up being directly in line with New York City, Philadelphia, Delaware, down, down the east coast of uh, the United States. So this being the top... Geez, that was good, huh? This is the tower side, okay? This dowel, if you want to. Uh, this dowel is the tower side, and this is where our feed was, okay? Our feed point, um, which is on, the, on this part of the antenna. And the termination was over here, where the wires come together. All right, so this is just, just a model to kind of show you what, what was going on. Um, and actually it's not even, uh, all as symmetrical as, as, as I would like. Um, so this piece was a, uh, pool strainer, a little aluminum pipe with five foot pieces of PVC. Sorry, folks, five foot pieces of PVC sticking out the end. So this distance on a four wavelength rhombic for, um, for, for, from 88 to 150 megahertz ended up being right around 27 feet across. And I forgot what this distance is, maybe 55 feet. I'll have to look. I have it all on the diagrams. All right. So now you have by suspending this and this isn't really accurate because this was a white, a, a rope that extended from that tree over to the tower, pulled really tight. And that pulled the, um, the rhombic level like this, but you still have the problem of it tilting back and forth. So it's simple enough to just tie a piece of string onto here or a piece of rope, very light piece of rope and drop it to the ground and the same over there. And then you can, you can, um, you can get the thing to be perfectly horizontal or vertical. So it was interesting to play around with. So that's kind of that's kind of what we have going on here. So the termination uh, resistor would be on this end. These two wires are not connected together in the real world. They are um, they come to this point and they're they're mechanically secured here. 
but there's a resistance in here. Now, if you don't put the resistor in, you're gonna have bi-directional. It's gonna be directional off the front and it's gonna be directional off the back. But by terminating this properly, you're able to get a really nice front to back ratio. Okay, so this you'll, you'll see in the, in the uh, scan, not the scans, the plots, the gain pattern for this antenna from uh, 80 megahertz all the way up to uh, 150. And you'll see how the lobes and things start to come together. Uh, really, really quickly, um, right here on this wire, right here, this is four wavelengths long. So what's that at six at uh, two meters? That's uh, what is it? We say six feet, roughly twenty five feet. So when when you have a an, a a wire like that, the lobes start to shoot off the sides like this. Excuse me. They're not like a dipole. They at, get more and closer to the to the um, end of the wire, if you will. And so now you have a lobe, if you look at this, if I put this right on here, you have a lobe pointing forward and a lobe pointing off to this side here. And that lobe is canceled with the other ones, but the ones that are inside are additive. So you have a lobe here, the same kind of lobes over here, same over, over here, and the same over here. Boy, I'm really terrible at this. Um, Anyhow, and that's how the and you'll I'll show you that on the papers over there. It's a lot easier to see than by this demonstration, but you could see that only having two supports in the event that they happen to be all pointing in the same the, the correct direction, you can build a two meter rhombic. Now the characteristic impedance of this is somewhere around six hundred ohms, four hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty to six hundred ohms. So you, I fed mine with twin lead, and. I brought that into the house and that worked fantastic um, for the FM broadcast band. And then I built a link couple tuner to work to two meters. And I worked down into Delaware on two meters with this particular antenna. Uh, and I'll show you pictures. Like I said, it's not up anymore and things aren't documented as well as they probably could have been. But I think you get the idea here. So. And and really, you know what the idea here is? The idea here is to don't let a, limitations like that stop you from experimenting. There's a way. There's a way to do things. Um, you know, who, whoever would have thought of a two uh, two support rhombic? You know, so maybe having boring meetings once in a while is pretty good. Anyhow, I'm going to go over to the desk. And uh, I'll show you some of the patterns, and I'll show you physically what the antenna looked like in real life. Okay? All right. Catch you over there. All right. W1VLF here behind the microphone. <clears throat> and a, a quick announcement here. Um, I kept saying four wavelengths. The actual size of the antenna was five wavelengths uh, per leg. So um, just keep that in mind um, instead of going back and... and editing out all that crap anyhow so this was uh, my attempt at a two uh, support fm broadcast and two meter rhombic okay here's uh here's a picture of it not not really a great picture but a picture of it nonetheless um the tower is located on the right hand side of the screen the mast, the 30-foot mast, is located on the left-hand side of the screen. And you can see there's a rope that runs, um, I'm not sure what you call that, messenger cable or a rope that, that runs from those two locations um, to support this antenna. We'll get a better look at that here. Uh, here's, here's another view of it. This goes off to the tower. This goes off to the, uh, the mast. And you can see in here probably better in this one. This is an aluminum pole that was um, used for a, a pool skimmer. So very, very lightweight, hardly weighed anything at all. And I PVC pipe stuck in the end here, about five feet out on each end, maybe, maybe a little bit less. Hard to remember the exact dimensions. But here's that line, that line that runs from, from the tower to the, um, the rope actually, that runs from the tower to the, um, to the pole. And if you look closely in here, 
you could see that there's a, a little bit of a rope that holds this tube up so that it doesn't sag or fall down, you know, fall or, uh, vertically down a little bit. It, it, it was pretty self um, supporting, but I still had to put that rope on there just to keep it a little bit up there. Oops, wrong direction. Okay, so here's a bit, here's a much better view. Uh, the, the cantonary rope, maybe, is that what you call it? The support rope. And just a little bit to tie the, the pole up here. And then here's the PVC pipe sticking out on the ends. Okay, so if we go back, we can see there's only two supports here. And um, I ended up putting a rope on one of these because it wasn't perfectly balanced to keep it perfectly uh, horizontal. The other thing uh, to remember here is... That, okay, there's a there's a close up of the PVC pipe. Um, there's the drive. Okay, this is the drive side, and you can it's hard to see it, but there's uh, the 300 ohm twin lead comes up, and it's tied in right here. Um, and the way I did this was the support rope was stretched perfectly tight, but I didn't want to tie the support rope here and pull on it to hold the whole weight of the rhombic up because that would would force would sort of squeeze the middle together. So I made this little uh, termination block out of a Goodwill um, uh, chopping block I got. And then I put a bungee cord. So this cable is taut and the thing that keeps the rhombic in it in shape is this bungee cord pulling it this way. And this is the termination side, so it's pointed in this direction. These pictures look a little bit weird because I think I'm standing underneath the pole at the time I was taking these pictures, so it looks like it's coming down on a 45 degree angle. Uh, this is the pole, and there was a, a, a rope going back to guy into the trees, and then a pulley here so I could lower the whole antenna up and down and make changes and mess around and whatnot. Um, so, here, here's uh, where, I, where I'm living. Here's my wonderful solar panels that make all that noise. And my tower is here. This is a really old uh, photograph off Google Earth, so it's, you can't really see the whole thing. But there's the tower, and the mast ended up, the pole, 30-foot pole. And this, this is purely by luck, right? Um, the 30-foot pole ended up being right around here somewhere, and so the rhombic is supported in here. And so I drew a line and followed that line. And look where that line goes. Right down through New York City, right down through Philadelphia, right down into Delaware. And the beam width would probably cover from this part of Delaware up to this part of Maryland. And I made lots of contacts with only, I don't know, 50 watts or so. Uh, down into these uh, uh, parts. The, the, it, it was a really, really nice antenna. And I, I think anybody who um, has a, even an inkling to uh, to try this should, should really get out there because it was very inexpensive to build. And uh, if you happen to have a, a lot of trees on your property with a space in between, I think you could pull this off. So how does this pattern get built? I mean, what's this whole paper clip thing about? Well, everybody's seen this, right? It's a half wave dipole. The wire is running from the bottom of the page to the top of the page, and it's in free space. And it says over here, which you probably can't read, but it says 2.18 or 1.4 dB again. So our, our wire is running vertically like this. And that's just what you expect, right? The classic figure eight. That's at a half wavelength in, in, in length, right? But we're talking about four or five wavelengths per side. So let's move up. Let's move up a little bit. This is what a one wavelength dipole looks like. Again, the wire is going vertically this way. And now you're starting to see that you would actually have some gain. Those lobes from here, all that power that would normally be out here and here, that power is now concentrated into these smaller lobes here. So after you go past the wavelength, this beam, this these lobes start to split. And here's a, here's a good example of it. <clears throat> uh, now we have four lobes, and, and you can see how these lobes kind of look like that paperclip. Maybe that's kind of a stretch, you know, but I like I said, I was in a really boring meeting. <laughs> um, 
And what's going to happen here, again, the wire is running vertically. What's going to happen here is as you go up in wavelengths, uh, I didn't go up to two and four. I didn't want to make this thing take forever. These lobes start aligning themselves closer and closer with the ends of the wires. Okay, so if we go back, we see we have the fat dipole there, the, the one wavelength, the two wavelengths, and these will start moving, this one counterclockwise, this one clockwise. So as we go, and that's going to be important. Why is that going to be important? Because that's going to determine uh, what the angle is to make these lobes line up. Now, there's lots of formulas uh, and, and things on the Internet to find this out. I did it by trial and error because this was... Uh, Again, in 2004 or six when I did this, so I I did it by building the the antenna in a modeling program and then duplicating it. So let's okay. So moving along, here's what here's what the antenna looked like. It consisted of four wires. Each one of these side wires uh, was five wavelengths long five times six and a half feet or whatever whatever two meters is is 35 feet so some of some of the numbers i gave you earlier were a little bit off uh, but it's 35 feet this way 35 feet this way 35 and 35 and here's where the 300 ohm twin lead goes right here and the characteristic impedance the 400 500 ohm resistor goes here and that's what makes it directional without without that termination you're going to have a lobe in the front and a lobe in the back and i was just interested in the stuff from new york city and philadelphia and i didn't want any of the competing stuff out of boston and whatnot to be interfering with my fm reception so so that's what the that's what the antenna physically looked like each one of these little dots here which look like a green line are, are segments and i i put way too many segments in just so that you could see uh, the shape of the antenna. Okay, so again, let's take a look at these lobes, right? Here's that paper clip, right? Here's that paper clip. So, and we know radiation is off this end. So the tower side is here, the pole side is here, and the resistance is here. So with it terminated like this, you'll only have one lobe. So this one and this one and this one and this one add, this one and this one cancel, and this one and this one cancel. But you can imagine if these wires weren't bent properly, right? If this angle was incorrect, and, and you'll see what happens when that angle is incorrect a little bit later on here. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me have a, just a sip. Uh, that's, that's important. And here's another another picture of it showing the individual radiation patterns and what it, what you end up with, right? This one, this one, this one, this one. These all add together, hopefully in phase, and these are all out of phase. And so if this is out of phase with this, it cancels. If this is out of phase with this, it cancels. So just just another way to look at it. So. Here at 100 megahertz, I took this this uh, this plot at 100 megahertz for this particular antenna, and I did not terminate it. And you can see that it's pretty much bi-directional. Uh, this is the 5 dB down point, so it's about 3 or 4 dB down. This is the terminated end, but it's open. So in that direction, um, it's it's not going to be it's not going to have a good front to back ratio until you get the proper termination resistor in there. So let's move down to the next one. Okay, so here is that same antenna at 100 megahertz, but I have the proper termination resistor in. Now you know, uh, rhombics are lossy. You could do a lot better with a with a um, uh, you know a really well designed. Um, Yagi, um, but the problem with the Yagi is that it's it's fairly narrow, so in in bandwidth, so to get it really wouldn't work across the whole FM broadcast band. Never mind all the way up to two meters. So then you would go to a log periodic, and a log periodic would work well, but it would have a much fatter and broader beam width. And besides that, I was screwing around with Rhombics, and I wanted to see what would happen. So. 
So that's that's the terminated uh, rhombic at 100 megahertz, okay, which is right in the middle of our 80 to 150 range here. So this uh, people, you might say to yourself, well, okay, that's fine, but if I wanted to feed this transmitter, um, what's the SWR? And, that, and that's a really good question. So I the antenna is terminated with 600 ohms, and this is a 600 ohm SWR curve. And even though I'm feeding with, with, with uh, I was feeding with 300 ohm cable, if you had a 600 ohm cable with uh, ladder line, you know, 450, your SWR would be very similar to this. And you could see how flat it is from 80 to 150 megahertz. So SWR wasn't really a concern, especially since I was only using a very small portion for, for transmitting. Um, but this is just there to give you an idea of what goes on, you know, what the SWR looks like. Um, with a Yagi, uh, you would, you know, you'd have a half a megahertz of bandwidth or whatever, depending on the design. But this is from 80 to 150 and the SWR is flat. Now that doesn't mean the gain doesn't change and it doesn't mean that the pattern doesn't change and you'll see that coming up here in a second. So here's here's um, 80 megahertz, right? This I'm going to show you a, a couple of these, Pat, a couple of these. This is at 80 megahertz, and this is uh, terminated, I forget, with what, 600 ohm resistor, I think. And so if you look down here, it says 12.64, 12.6 dBi gain. And I wish these were more, better resolution pictures, but... Uh, the beam width is something like 18 and a half degrees, okay? Now let's see what happens when we go to 88 megahertz. We're not, we've changed nothing with the antenna. We no height changes, no size changes, no angle changes, no wire changes, nothing. So we're going to move up to 88 megahertz in this next picture. Nope. Now we're moving up to 88 megahertz. Now the gain is up to something like 14.3. And you notice, I'll go back and forth. See how that lobe is getting a little bit more narrow. In fact, uh, it's now 17 degrees roughly. So let's go up to 100 megahertz. Now the lobe is only 15 degrees, 16 degrees, and the gain is somewhere up around 16.4 uh, dBi. Um, and this was over real ground, so you have to uh, you have to assume that it's uh, 6 dB less than that in, in the real world. But you could see how the pattern keeps, uh, you know, what, what we're really looking at here is, do I have gain at 80, 100, 108 megahertz? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Um, and, and the reason this is getting narrower is because as we went back to, we'll go back up here, these lobes are starting as we get more and more wavelengths, right? The wavelength or the the length of the of each side stays the same, but the relative amount of wavelengths increases as we go up in frequency. So these things start coming together. This one moves this way, this one moves this way. Let me see if I can sneak back here really quick. So there's 108 megahertz. The next one is 144. And you can see how it's getting very narrow. The um, it's about 11 degrees wide, and the front-to-back ratio is really good, right? There's uh, 25 dB or so. The, the side lobes maybe not so great. But again, for, for this experiment, and we're also at 19.8 dBi. So this thing looks really optimum. Let's go up a little bit higher in frequency. Let's go to 200 megahertz. Oh, Jesus, what happened? Well, at 200 megahertz, yeah, we have a main lobe, but now we have a couple of lobes that are only 3 dB down. And if we go back again to, to look at this, what's happened is instead of having only two of these lobes or, or the amount that you have with five wavelengths, it's split again. And so now what's happened is... Um, we're, we're past the point where this antenna really is going to work well, okay, and in and, and those angles. Now, if you had taken those angles, went out to the antenna, and made the antenna physically longer, right, we'll go back, if we go back here, sorry about all this running around, but if we took these angles and we pulled them in like this, because we know the lobe that was here, the lobe that was here is now 
lot closer to the end of the wire. If we stretched this and brought this closer in, um, then this pattern here would all come together. So that's that's pretty cool. But you but if you can look at that and go, wow, from 144 all the way down to 80 megahertz, I have a very good working antenna. Now, the other thing you could think about is people used rhombics for TV reception, right? You had um, broadband six megahertz signals that you needed. Uh, you know, you you. You couldn't use a Yagi for this. You'd have to use a log periodic. But here with a rhombic, you have very wide, you know, bandwidth and very um, a very stable uh, SWR and was easy to match to the 300 ohms input. So that was one of the uses. But the FM broadcast band is a great use for this. So let's go back. Okay, so now, now that we're so high in frequency that there's so many wavelengths per leg that the beam is starting to split and, and it just would get worse and worse as you went up in frequency from here. So here, and, and I know this is kind of hard to see, but here is uh, an overlay. The primary is um, 80 megahertz, blue is 88 green is 100 and etc and you can see those and you can see the gain uh here, here's the, here um uh, i don't know there's like an additional 7 db a gain or 8 db a gain be, uh, across the bandwidth and you can also see the uh the lobes getting narrower and narrower um the reason why this says 80 megahertz is because that's the primary and these are just traces that i laid on top of it so you could see that wow I guess that's the end of it. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, I guess I could say um, if you have questions or comments or you've done something similar in the uh, in the past, please leave a comment below. Um, also, I have I noticed that a lot of a lot of folks aren't subscribed. Um, I certainly appreciate the ones that are, and if you could subscribe to my channel, that helps feed the the YouTube algorithm. Um, and also if you like this kind of a story, I mean, uh, this is more like a, a, a sort of a story format than, than an actual, uh, building of something. Uh, I have other projects like this as well. So anyway, that's it. Please subscribe. And if you're feeling uh, particularly generous and you like this kind of thing, um, you could give send a couple of bucks over to support the channel through the um, super thanks button that's at the base of this video. And I can't think of anything else to say, so I'm going to stand by. This is W1VLF saying 73 from Rhombic Central.